CNN had a segment with a trans athlete. They call this person, I think on, on the screen, what do they say here? Yeah, trans female. Okay, so they call this person a trans female athlete, which I assume means it's a male who identifies as a woman. But you see how sex and gender have once again become interchangeable? After they spent the last, I don't know, 40 or 50 years telling us that sex and gender are two different things and they're not interchangeable. You know, being a woman is not exactly the same thing as being a female. And a, a person can be a female, doesn't necessarily make them a woman. That's what they said for the you know, last 40 or 50 years. And now, over the last couple of years, what they, they've gone back and, uh, and said, yeah, never mind, actually it's the same. I know we screamed at you for 50 years that it's two different things, but turns out now basically it's interchangeable. Woman, female, same thing. Sex, gender, same thing. So, but that's the least of the problems, I think, with this segment. And um, let's, let's just listen to this madness. The simplistic version is that those born male have a natural physiological advantage that also includes differing levels of testosterone. You know the argument. Your response to that is what? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a nonsense argument. So depends on how much time you want to let me get into the weeds because I can literally spend hours on this. How about 30, how so, about 30 seconds? <laughs> yeah, so the first thing is... Um, Testosterone, your natural internally produced endogenous testosterone has zero impact on your athletic performance. And we know that. But we didn't know that until 2013 because everyone just assumed that, well, testosterone is why men are bigger, stronger, faster. But when we finally studied it, there's no relationship between tes natural testosterone and performance. So why is testosterone banned? Well, every body produces a different amount, and when you add to it through exogenous means, doping, there is a performance advantage. But when you take a body's natural amount and you drop below it, there tends to be a performance disadvantage. For example, in uh, one study, they found in this elite set of male athletes, some men below the women's average for testosterone were competing at no competitive disadvantage with men that had 40 times as much testosterone. Right. Uh, the first problem here, maybe the biggest problem, are the glasses there. Who goes on, on television wearing glasses like that? Now, I know you might point out that I have made some interesting fashion choices with what I choose to wear when I'm on uh, in front of the camera. But come on, give me a break. That's uh, what rainbow, rainbow glasses. But this is what you what you're seeing there is the left doing what the left does. Um, and that is distracting from the main point. And what they're going to do is really on any issue, especially where they know they have an indefensible position, which is every issue, uh, particularly when it comes to gender, <laughs> Got they're going to home in on one specific argument. And what they say in that area will be false, but it's also going to be almost entirely beside the point. But then the, the strategy is that the other side, on the right, we get sucked into having this argument over this basically irrelevant detail because what they're saying there is so wrong and we can we we feel like we can't leapfrog over that we have to you know argue over that so the claim that testosterone doesn't give athletes an advantage is obviously ridiculous but it's almost beside the point we could even it's not about testosterone is just one one minor advantage in comparison to all the other advantages that men have they don't even talk about any of those other advantages. Now it's all about testosterone. And so they're going to pull out all the studies and they're going to say, this study over here said this about testosterone. They're going to start using a lot of complicated sounding words like exogenistic and all these kinds of words to make it sound like they're, um, they have the science supporting them and they're, they're taking a very nuanced and intelligent position. And this is all what they're actually claiming is that men don't have any innate biological advantage in sports. It is so insane. It, it, it is as crazy as claiming that the earth is flat. I know a lot of positions get compared to that. Oh, these are like flat earthers. No, this is actual flat eartherism. This is as crazy as that. It is that divorced from reality. 
Obviously, men have an advantage in sports. That's why you take any sport and you find that the, that the best men are always better than the best women in most sports, I should say. You want to, make, you want to talk about gymnastics or those guys, it might be different. But when it comes to the, the traditional competitive sports, racing, you know, basketball, football, wrestling, boxing, one-on-one, where it's all about strength and stamina, pure athleticism, men are always, the best men are always substantially better than the best women. And in fact, men a few notches down are going to be substantially better than the best women. That's why you take any D3 uh, basketball team from college and you put them against the best WNBA players, we all know they would dominate. The score would be 85 to zero. We all know that. Go to any state, look at the, uh, the, the track and field statistics and records in any state in the union, anyone. And what you're going to find is that all of the fastest times belong to men. Always, always, everywhere, and for all time. Why is that? Because men have dozens and dozens of physical advantages, and, it's, and testosterone isn't even the beginning of it. You're talking about muscle structure, bone structure, everything down, you know, even things like women having wider hips. I mean, things like that. Every, every part of us as, as, as men is going to be going to be different from women. We, as, as a man, you are male down to your very bones, literally, and women are women down to their bones. And all through that, you find differences. And in so many of these cases, the differences give advantages to men in most competitive sports. Listen, hit that subscribe button right now. Do it right now. I thank you for your compliance. It is somewhat appreciated.